Many, many Christians believe in the death of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, upon the cross, upon Calvary. And they also love to quote the fact that he said while on the cross that it is done, it is finished, right? And the apostles came and said, while it was done on the cross, Jesus gave his life for us. Jesus gave his life to save the sins for the world on Calvary. So today we are asking that very question. If it was all done and said, why did we have people like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Why did we have the religion of Islam preceding the religion of Christianity? And Sheikh and Dr. Ahmed Dirat is about to answer some of these very difficult questions. So I hope you guys are ready. If you are, drop a like on the video, subscribe if you are new, and also leave a comment and tell us how you feel about Christians always quoting that Jesus Christ was the final messenger, Jesus Christ was the final step in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's plan to save mankind. But without further ado, let's go and let's get it. Good evening, Mr. Leader. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very thankful for this talk tonight, and I think, you know, I agree with you in many points, particular that Muhammad is definitely a very great leader of his people, and he has done, he has done many... To lift the mic up. Sorry. He has done many positive things, I think, for his people, for the Arabic, Arabic people. And I think in very many respects, Muhammad is a person who has brought... Uh, even in our days, perhaps, or he, is, he can be called, even in our days, one of the greatest people. I must admit to this point. But I think there's one question, I think, which is on my mind. Uh, I think we all admit that the Rolls Royce is the best car. Now, maybe some people, they will say it's a Mercedes. But yet, although the Rolls Royce is the best car, it cannot fly. It cannot fly. So I think our, the question must be, according to which then standard, is Muhammad the greatest? What is the standard? Now you ask the question in your talk, what was the mission of Christ? Now the mission of Christ was clearly said in the, in the gospel, you read it in all the gospels in the beginning. The mission of Christ was that he is a lamb of God who takes away the sin of mankind. In other words, the whole mission and the purpose of Christ was to bring man into unity with God. Sorry, now, uh, can you put a question? Yes, now I'm, I'm actually you know, answering his question. He brought the question, I would like to answer his question here. And I'm coming finally to my question. Um, secondly, you quoted John 17, verse 1 and verse 4. And there it says, you know, Jesus did not say this particular question, passage. You no, know, we must put these things right. He doesn't say, it is finished there. He says, the time has come to glorify me, to glorify your son. Now, that was the beginning of this, uh, the crucifixion or the being uh, taken prisoner and then being crucified. And then we read in verse 4 what you quoted. Those people have got eternal life who believe and know God and Jesus Christ, his son. And then two chapters later only, when he was caught and so on, and when he was on the cross, he said the words, it is finished. In other words, he said, I have accomplished the task for which I have come. Now, the question, who is the greatest? Christ came to give us life eternal. Muhammad came to do many things, to deal with practical matters like you, how to use a toilet and other things. But the if, if Christ came to give us life eternally, what about the people who came before Christ? Don't they have eternity? Didn't they have a test set before them for them to achieve or for them to go to heaven, for them to go to Jannah, for them to go to paradise? Didn't they have a test set by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by God himself, the eternal God, the supreme God, to say that you must abide by these rules, this is how you must live in order for you to achieve eternity. Because if we say that Jesus Christ is the only one who came with the concept of eternity to give people eternity, what about the people who were alive before Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, and who passed on before Jesus Christ, peace be upon him? What do we say about those people? But let's continue. The greatest question is, I think, and the greatest purpose is, how, how do you and I get reconciled with God? How do I have eternal life? You haven't answered this question. You mentioned many things on a social, historical, political, military aspect. 
But the standard of God and the question of God is, how can I attain peace with God? Jesus gave the perfect answer. So Jesus is the greatest on this particular standard. What yeah. is your answer to Good. that? May I have your book open as it is? Yes, I want to read that verse in your Bible. The one you say, John chapter 17, 3 and 4. What does it say there? Thank you. Thank you. I'll find that. Could you, could you get your microphone? I'll bring it Bible to you. Right. Now, this is eternal life. I read it. This is life eternal. Same thing. That they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Word for word, choice of words, same meaning. I have brought you glory on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. Completing the work in the authorized King James Version, it says, I have finished. This is the new international version of mm -hmm. yours. Mm -hmm. The King James Version says, I have finished the work that you have given me to do. Now, do you take exception to that translation? Um, I think you must be very clear here. As you, you must see the... No, the word finished. Yes. The word I got um, is not from... This is the King James Version of the Bible, mm -hmm. which is the Bible used by pre predominantly the whole Christian world. Mm -hmm. This new international version of yours is something novel to the bulk of mankind. No, no. To the bulk, I said, to the bulk no. of Christendom. No. Look, as against the King no. James Version, mm -hmm. this is the Bible that is translated into other languages. This one, not no. that. No. The new international version has been translated from the original text of Hebrew and Greek. What, what? Not from the King no, James no, what, Version. What year was this first printed? Not uh, very recently. But tell, according tell, to the no, original no, no, just, manuscript. Just, just tell me when was this printed. I think it was in 81. 1981. I think it was 81. Right, that's three years ago. This one was first published in 1611. Yes. yes. Right? And right. this was the only Bible available up to almost yesterday. No. Before I you said had all Please, please. I, I understand my simple language. I said this was the only Bible. This guy is debating something that everybody knows. Everybody knows. We should just continue with the King James. Let's leave all the other versions. Let's continue with the King James for the purposes of this debate in order for us to find the answer to the question he asked. He said that why do we consider the Prophet wasallam as significant more than Jesus Christ if Jesus Christ is the one who came and said he is finished with the task. But now, as Ahmed Didat is answering his question, he wants to debate the validity of the text in the New International Version and the King James. James version it makes no sense but let's continue I will look when I was a young man there was no other Bible that you could buy but can we come this? back to the topic mr. D that we are right. diverting from the topic now we're talking about the Bible not on the text no the, the text, text is I, who is the greatest I am talking number one you are deceiving the people by quoting something from a new Bible no. when look you must tell me now that this Bible is rubbish I should throw this away you must tell me that. And you must tell all the Christians, the DRC, they follow this. The, 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 the Zulus, they follow this. The Chanas, everybody. In Arabic, this is the only Bible available. In, in Urdu, this is the only Bible available. Now, if Jesus said it is finished, that my work is finished. Now, does finish means finish? Will you have a look at it? Jesus says here very clearly, and you see the talk, see please, people, see the context. And this is life eternal, life eternal. He came to give life eternal. That they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. And I have glorified thee on earth, he on earth. Glorified God. Finished, he glorified God on right, earth. Thee, of course, yeah, God. Yeah. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to I do. I have finished. Right? Let me just carry on. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. So here you see already Christ has finished so far his job on earth. On earth. Not but so far. Shh, that so far, don't put your words inside the Bible. Does it say so far? Please read the Mr. Bible. Mr. Dida, does Keep the Bible stop here? Does the word of God stop here? 
Now that's finished. What about the two chapters later on where it says in the same Bible like right. yours? Right. May I just quote yes. this in yes. your Bible? You, yes, you go, have ahead. Here. go ahead. Where Jesus Christ says clearly on the cross, when they, when they crucified him and two others with him, on either side, one, and Jesus in the midst, Pilate wrote the title and put it on the cross, and the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Now let me just find the other portion where it says here, it is finished. A little bit later, I marked it in my Bible, it's easier to find. Let me explain to my brethren here. You see, this word finished in John chapter yeah, 17, in 13, in chapter 17, it says finished. Again, the same word finished is used later on. Maybe after a year, maybe after six months, maybe after six weeks, same word finished is used. Now, the translators of this Bible, they can see that you can't have two times you say finished. So they change the words. Look, this is how the tricks that they have been playing. It's going on. This game is going on eternally. Never. As soon as it doesn't suit them, look, the word there is finished. The other place it says it is finished. So you can't have finished the job twice to get your pay. When you finished it, you get your pay. You can finish one job, uh, one half no, of but job. That's, if he said the job, the whole job that God had given him, for you granted him authority over all people. Now this is life eternal, that they may know you, the only true God. Not Jesus Christ. You, you. In, 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 in the old English is the singular. The only true God. And Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on earth by completing the work. I said, look, by finishing the work. What is, what is the difference between completing and finishing? But now, the trick is that the, if you use the word finish, as the, author, as the writers of the King James Version had done, and you use again his finish, he said, but he had already finished the job. Didn't he get his pay? Now that other finish, you see, is a man saying, I am dead. No. Look, that finished job is that he's dead, I'm dying. This is what he's talking about. It is finished with me. You know, something comes along like that young man, he came along with those questions and it seemed it was finished with me. Am I right? In other words, I couldn't understand, I couldn't grasp it. What am I going to tell him? You know, the whole thing is like a confusion, like a riddle, like a conundrum. So, it was finished with me. Now what finished? That means I was dead? No. In other words, you feel, man, that you are helpless. Jesus Christ same, he says, it is, if he said those words. Number one, we contest the words, but the words are in your Bible, in that Bible. I'm consistent. I'm not using one from here and one from there. Right. Here he says finished. Either when he said finished, he meant finished or he was deceiving. He wasn't speaking the truth. He's telling God, I finished the job and now do your job. Did you forget that Jesus said, when he used the word, I have finished the work which thou gavest to me. Right. That Jesus prayed to the Father and he says, No, Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. In other words, here Jesus Christ says, the work of God continues in his life. Christ said, you have to resurrect me. He speaks here already. He was ready to do the will of God perfectly to the end. Where did he say that he was ready to be resurrected? Did he say that? Ahmed did not ask this guy a very simple thing to do. He said, read the Bible. Read the Bible as is. Don't add your own words, your own interpretation, your own revelations into the Bible. And I always say this in my videos, that the problem with many Christians is that we say we got revelation when reading a text and we think about something, we have an idea or an opinion. We say it's revelation. And we believe revelation that comes in our own minds to be true and apply it to the text, even though it does not apply. Similar to this instance, there's no way where Jesus Christ spoke about resurrection. But yet this guy is speaking about resurrection and he is very sure in what he's saying. But let's continue. We are almost done. And the glorification of Jesus Christ took place when Jesus Christ was risen and he was alive. And you proclaim that forgiveness of sins that, has been that is the subject, so he is greatest. That greatest. is the subject we are discussing on Saturday in but the city hall. My question was, my final question is on this point. No, no, Isn't Jesus Christ the greatest because he gives eternal life? He says, he said himself that there is somebody coming after me. No, no 
Now you say no. You say now you say it's the Holy Spirit. Now this is what it means now. You want to debate with me. And if you want to debate with me, the privilege is yours. You see, if you want to debate any subject, all that I've been dealing with so far, all the subjects in the future, it would be your privilege, your privilege. I'll gi I'm giving you, look at me, look at me, look at me. I'm giving you the privilege of organizing a meeting. You organize a meeting here in Cape Town on any subject, whether on the crucifixion, whether Jesus is God, whether the spirit of truth is Muhammad or the Holy Ghost, anything you organize the meeting and we, i will come along and address that meeting then you can we can have a debate but here is now question time and i say finished is finished when the man said he finished it and he's asking his reward right so unless again he's speaking with a tongue in his cheek how oh. i have glorified thee on earth i have finished the work uh, I, haven't, I haven't read this one nicely. Let me see here. The passage of John, which one? John 14, I think. This one is John 19, 30. Um, it's when he was hanging on the cross and he said these words, it is finished. Yes, that is true. According to the Bible, that is true. Can he finish the same job twice? Obviously not. Uh, you know, this just makes no sense. But I'm about to add my three cents on this. I'm about to add my three cents on this. And right now they are just telling you, um, this is a scripture from the Holy Quran. It's a very scripture in the Holy Quran. And it speaks to the Christians who have written the scriptures with their own hands. Like I said, own opinions, own revelations. And they put that as fact. They think that that is fact. And they apply it to the text. Surah 2 verse 79. Now look. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he could not have said, it is finished, it is done, while also coming and saying that there's somebody who has to come after him, that if he does not leave, the comforter will not come. The spirit of truth who will show us all things would not come. It means his job is finished for himself, then somebody else has to come and continue with the task. Which means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's task was not done. Yes, Jesus' task might have been done on earth, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's plan was not done. That is why we need people like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is why people like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are also important within the religious spectrum. Before Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, came John. John spoke of the same thing, didn't he? He said that, no, I am not worthy to untie the soul's of his sandals you know he is the one who will baptize you with the holy spirit and fire he is the one who is greater than i that is what john said and after john said that obviously his task was done because he came to prophesy he came to show people of the next messenger of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and after he has done that jesus christ peace be upon him as well says the same thing that my job here is done somebody else has to come right after me and after that we see the prophet muhammad peace be upon him so it is really not a debate as to who is greater than who who is more powerful than who because these people were all sent by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to carry out the instructions the directions and the mandate in which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them thank you so much for watching today's video it was a very nice informative quick video drop a like on the video as well leave a comment if you have an idea as to why do most Christians feel like Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is greater than the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Until we meet again next time on the next reaction video, much love, peace.